Welcome to DML Discovery Metal Legion. Ah yes, it's time for another album ranking. Today we are ranking the most spookiest black metal band, Carrick Angren. That's right. Carrick Angren is a band I used to hate, but I exposed myself more to Carrick Angren and I really do enjoy them now. And I thought it would be fitting, it would be fitting to do an album ranking on Halloween for Carrick Angren because Carrick Angren has the most spookiest lyrics you could ever read, the most scariest stories you could ever read as well, and the most interesting musical compositions you could ever hear. Carrick Angren really experiment throughout the albums, at times sounding quite avant-garde, quite progressive, but also sounding like black metal. That's right. Throughout their years, they have expanded their sound. They've incorporated more symphonic elements, more theatrical elements throughout their albums. They've always been theatrical. They've always been symphonic. And they are a symphonic black metal band. But their songwriting, in my opinion, is absolutely fantastic. And this is a band that will make you become addicted. I have listen to Carrick Angren for countless hours throughout this month because basically last month I didn't like Carrick Angren. This month I absolutely love them and this is because of how addicted some of these albums can be. So I went through Carrick Angren's discography. They have six albums to date and these six albums, in my opinion, are absolutely fantastic. They really are. So it's going to be incredibly hard to rank Carrick Angren. In case you don't know, Carrick Angren are a symphonic theatrical black metal band. They don't sound like a typical black metal band. They are quite more out there. They are quite more outgoing. They are from Netherlands. The members are Seragor and Arctic. Sarah Gore is the lead vocals, also does guitar, and Arctic does keyboards, piano, and orchestrations, and the backing vocals as well. So it is a two-piece band, but when they play live, they are like a four-piece band or something, but they, I think they actually have a full band live. But also Namta is involved as well on these albums. Also one of the primary members, which I totally forgot. But anyway, let's get on with this album ranking. So Carrick Angram formed in 2003, but they released a debut album in 2008, had a few EPs and demos as well. Like we're not gonna talk about the Chase Vault tragedy and Ethereal Veiled existence. We're mainly focusing on the, on the full studio albums. So coming last in my opinion is Frankensteiner, Strado, Mantanos. It's Frankenstein of Strata Montanos. Released in 2020, so during the pandemic, they released an album which was very different, in my opinion, to Carrick Angren's discography. This album is pretty fun overall. This album is much more theatrical than a lot of other albums from Carrick Angren. But I just feel that this songwriting is slightly weak. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love this album now, but at first I thought this was a total piece of shit. But as you listen to this LP over and over again, you start to really enjoy it. Great songs like Scourge, Ghoul, Undead, Frankensteiner, Strada Montanos, how catchy is that chorus? Songs like The Necromancer, got songs like Operation Compass, Der Vampire von Nürnberg, what a great song that is. It's got some really twisted stories as well. Skull with a Forked Tongue is one of the heaviest songs by Carrick Angram. Cerebral uses uh, those black metal aesthetic vocals and much more harsh and aggressive vocals as well. Like, like a conscious parasite I roam, which is running about eight minutes. It's really cool guitar work on this. Love the theatrical orchestral elements on this as well. And just the build up to the songs, the orchestral elements that build up and it's just brilliant overall. So Carrick Angren, Frankensteiner, Stradamontanos sits last, even though it's a great album. Next up is their debut album, which is Lamendam. <laughs> Shadows of 
Lum and Dum is a cool concept album overall, talking about an overall region, an overall town, talking about the stories of what has happened throughout the history of Lum and Dum, the town. And yeah, there are some great moments on this. This is more in the style of Dimmer Bogier, their, their sound as well. Great orchestral elements. This is symphonic black metal through and through. Some great drumming. Cerebral's vocals are fantastic as well. And Artics and, and the, the guitar work is amazing. Phobic shadows and moonlit meadows. A strange presence near the woods. So damn good. Heretic poltergeist phenomena. It's like talking about the overall perspective, like the dark stories of Lamandam, and I absolutely love it. The Carriage Will Murder, as well as a great song. Haunting Echoes from the 17th Century, so really cool songs, quite progressive. The Corpse in a Nebulous Creek, the vocal work by Seragor is absolutely fantastic. But yeah, Lamandam, it's energetic, it's what you want to hear from Symphonic Black Metal. It's less theatrical in my opinion, more symphonic. There are a few uh, theatrical albums on this list that I feel that are a little bit better than Lamenda. Next up is Where the Corpses Sink Forever. For a moment their pain disappears. Overall, the story writing on this, the songwriting is absolutely amazing. This is easily one of the heaviest Carrick Angren albums, and just the storytelling on this, the lyrics are just brilliant. Lingering in an imprint haunting. It's all about war. It's all about death. General dirge of a violinist, a beautiful violin part. The story about a, a soldier that is a violinist that decides to walk in the fields during a battle, stands in the middle of the and starts to play the violin while the opposition stops. They look at the violinist they look and just stops for a moment, listening how beautiful the soldier plays a violin and all of a sudden the opposition kills the violinist and uh, yeah, that's the overall story. <laughs> so our uh, Spectral Infantry Battalions is so damn good. General Nightmare, Magnificent Song, Little Hector, What Have You Done? Cool song overall, very graphic lyrics, but I love it. And these fields are lurking, seven pairs of demon eyes. Great album, more theatrical you could say, like the sound on this is absolutely fantastic. As you listen to an ominous recording, holy shit, the gunshots sound so damn good. And even loading the guns, ah, it's like a 3D sound, which I absolutely love. Sarah Wall's vocals, fantastic on this, and I love it. So yeah, Where the Corpse Sinks Forever by Carrick Angren sits here. Next up is Carrick Angren, Dance and Laugh Amongst the Rotten. Released on June 16th, 2017, and wow, this, this album is amazing. It really is. It's just brilliant. It's quite atmospheric as well, but it's all about spirits. It's all about Charles Francis Coughlin. Yes, that song is absolutely amazing. Charles Francis Coughlin had the catchiest chorus for black metal ever, in my opinion. Song for the Dead is so damn cool with the trumpets. Easily one of the most theatrical albums Carrick Angle have ever produced. Pitch Black Box is so damn good as well. The Possession Process, great song. Three Times Thunder Strikes. Yeah, this is heavily, this is a pretty heavy album as well by Carrick Angren. Like Blood Queen is cool with the cool guitar riffs, the cool melodies, and I absolutely love it. And uh, yeah, this, this album can be quite heavy. This album can be quite malicious as well. But yeah, you've got songs like Charles Francis Coughlin and Song for the Dead, which is beautiful and easily one of the best albums, one of the best albums in their discography. Next up is This Is No Fairy Tale, released on the 23rd of February 2015. <laughs> 
this album's fantastic. I love the concept of this LP, and you, you know I've reviewed this LP, and I'll give you a short, um, a short uh, synopsis of what this album is about. It's a concept album, like a lot of Carrick Angren albums are. It's a concept album, and it's talking about two children that run away from home, finding their mother dead. They run away from home, thinking they're gonna find a brand new home, thinking, thinking they're gonna find a better place, until they clash with none other than a killer clown a killer clown that is like possessed possessed by a witch that believes he is possessed by a witch believes that he sacrifices the children in order to to thrive in order to uh, get stronger you could say but yeah this they they clash with a serial killer and the serial killer mutilates the younger brother and the sister is then trapped in a cage for days but yeah, long story short, this is an absolute brutal album. And yeah, this is more on a black and death metal side of things. Cerebral's vocals are much more deeper, much more harsher, much more aggressive on this album. Easily one of their heaviest albums to date. This is no fairy tale, it's fantastic. It's quite technical. It's also quite progressive as well. Some odd time signatures, especially through songs like There's No Place Like Home, Where Crows Tick on Windows, being one of my favorite Carrick Angren songs of all time. God damn, he found them. So damn good. Um, Dreaming of a Nightmare in Eden is a really weird song overall. But you got songs like Two Flies Flew into a Black Sugar Cobweb. Wow, just the eerie presence of the clown throughout the lyrics is so damn good. Killed and Served by the Devil. Songs like Tragedy Ever After, the overall twist of this album. Well, make your jaw drop. You gotta listen to this album. You gotta listen to the lyrics. You gotta appreciate this album overall. It's so damn good. The guitar solos are amazing. The theatrical elements are incredible as well. It's easily one of my favorite albums of Carrie Kangaroo's discography, easily. And finally, my favorite album by Carrick Angren be one of my first. This album actually made me enjoy Carrick Angren, made me, uh, this album clicked for me, and I want to explore more of this band. It's none other than Death Came Through a Phantom Ship. <laughs> This is the most pristine Carrick Angren album I've heard. Um, the production's fantastic. The theatrical elements are amazing. The symphonic elements are incredible. Cerebral's vocals are amazing. The music songwriting is brewing as well. The sighting is important of doom. The melodies are so damn good with some infectious guitar hooks. Songs like And the Consequences Macabre. Van der Decken's Triumph, songs like Departure Towards a Nautical Curse, The Cost of a Spectral Ship, oh, how good is that song? And The Shining was a portent of gloom. Again, it's a concept album. Like, In the Siding is a portent of doom. It's so damn haunting, the overall lyrics. Like, if you read the lyrics, it's pretty haunting, it really is. And it's just brewing overall. This is easily my favorite Carrick Angren album, absolutely love it. But of course, I feel that Carrick Angren's discography will change in time for me because This Is No Fairy Tale was once my favorite Carrick Angren, but as I listen to this, Death Came Through a Phantom Ship over and over again, I'm starting to really appreciate that, yeah, this is the one. This is the one, in my opinion, that made Carrick Angren, that that made me like Carrick Angren. I just feel that Death Came Through a Phantom Ship is the number one album by Carrick Angren. But yeah, amazing symphonic, theatrical, black metal band, that's for sure. Really do enjoy it. I don't get the hate for this band, to be honest, even though I hated them myself. But I really do enjoy them now. They're addictive, they're fantastic, and I can't stop listening to it. I also love Saragor's presence as well, especially when he's like in the on, on the walking stick and he's great live. Um, I haven't seen him live, but I've seen YouTube videos of him and I would love to see him live. I think they would be such a joy to watch. But yeah, Carrick Angren's album ranking is done. So yeah, let me know in the comments below your favorite Carrick Angren album. Do you agree? or disagree with my opinion. Keep the spooky discussion in the comments section down below and I will see you in the next one.